Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Red Gaming Citycom video, we're going to be discussing tech news which, as usual, have popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We'll be starting things out with the 7980XE processor from Intel, whose 18 cores, 36 threads, absolutely ruffle stomps any competition, including the Threadripper 1950X, but then again, this is a 2000 US dollar processor. Then we'll move over to Intel's mainstream lineup, including a piece of news that the 8-core processor that we've been hearing for the 1151 socket, LGA 1151 socket, could actually possibly be a Coffee Lake based and not um, its successor, the Ice Lake range. And then we'll continue on the Intel trend just for a second because apparently Intel will be delaying the 10nm Canon Lake processors to the end of 2018, which is causing OEMs to be rather uncomfortable. And then we're going to finish the video with a kind of a bad piece of news, actually. Craig Ferry, who is the manager of MT Mods, is blaming AlphaCool for the mis... Well, I guess mistreatment of the Project Gold Rush uh, computer case which he created and the rig which is contained inside because essentially it was shipped back improperly packaged and not prepared at all for shipment this means that essentially the computer is pretty much toast at least according to his allegations but as i said we're going to be starting things out with the uh, intel range first specifically of course the 7980xe so this processor is not cheap i just want to get this out and over with this is considerably more expensive than any other processor currently on the market or will be on the market anytime soon it costs two thousand us dollars about twice that of the 1950xe and sole purpose for existing, undoubtedly, is just to say, no, 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 we've got 18 cores, you've only got 16 for AMD. AMD currently, of course, are making the most of this with Fred Ripper by saying that they've got the most cores on the market. So, obviously, one of the primary purposes of the existence of the CPU is to essentially take that crown back from AMD. Anyway, a website by the name of cool enjoy has managed to actually get hold of an early sample of this and it was tested on a asus apex motherboard which is boosting all cores 4.2 gigahertz in cinebench which is a bit surprising because in theory the cpu should only go to 4.4 gigahertz with two cores that's using turbo max 3 and 4.2 gigahertz with turbo max 2. regardless of all of that the results are well quite honestly startling for example, W Prime 2.1, uh, this is using the 32M, is scoring about 2.1. I'm just going to round these results up. This is compared to, it's about a second faster essentially than 3.1 of the 7900X. The Ryzen Threadripper 1950X with uh, W Prime at 1024M gets around 53 compared to 41. Are you starting to see the pattern here? Uh, CPU-Z scores an absolutely insane amount. It scores 11,323. This compares to 9,132 of the 1950X. Cinebench R15, our friend and buddy. Single thread results are actually a little bit higher than what I considered them to be. Not much. Uh, once again, this probably is primarily to do with the a boost clock so it is nice to see that there is no there's no issues here and that the high level of core count and all of that stuff hasn't caused any latency so it, it is still getting the 196 Cinebench points but the real story at least to me is the 7980XE which is scoring 40 sorry uh, 7980XE in multi-thread which is scoring 4204 points this is comparing to 3069 of the Threadripper 1950X in distributed mode. Finally, we'll quickly bring up Firestrike, of course, physics score, which is reliant once again on the CPU. We have a score of 32,201, which is about 5,000 points higher than the Threadripper 1950X, once again using local mode. Or, to put it in another uh, perspective, it's around 8,000 points higher than the 7900X. Of course, there is a 1,000 US dollar price difference between the 7900X um, and the 7980XE, so is that worth it to you? Uh, well, as usual, it depends on your usage scenario. I actually had a couple of people message asking should they go with like 
you know, a 7980XE or perhaps one of the lower end ones like the uh, 7960 or something like that. Or, you know, uh, maybe they should go with Threadripper. Um, and they were mostly doing virtual machines. And I said, well, are you doing GPU work? And they said, no, it's primarily just like databases and stuff that doesn't really require, at least their usage scenarios don't really require GPUs. And I said, well, honestly, if it were me, I'd just be tempted, um, especially if you don't need uh, flexibility on those machines. Like if you feel that the workloads are going to be pretty consistent, I'd be tempted just to save the money and buy a couple of Ryzen 7s, maybe even a Ryzen 7 Pro and just kind of do that. Um, obviously you save some money and you still get 16 cores or I'd just go with the Threadripper 1920 or 1950. On the other hand, there are some individuals who do need every last drop of performance uh, with their workloads. So in those cases, then obviously something like the 7980XE could be the one for you. So an update for another story that we covered just a day or two ago, and that is the, the 79, oh, sorry, the Z390 may actually feature support for an 8-core 10nm Ice Lake processor. But that doesn't seem to be the case. We have a new rumor which shows, at least according to this, um, uh, this news, this, this, uh, these results, by the way, come from an XTU errata log. And they show, well, I'll read it out verbatim, CFL added support for 8 slash 2 core. Obviously, CFL, I'm going to shock you, stands for Coffee Lake. And according to Digi Times, some vendors are actually considering skipping Cannon Lake and waiting for its successor, Ice Lake. Because according to Intel's roadmaps, there's not going to be that much difference in release date between the two. This is essentially because we're seeing Intel have difficulties with 10nm. The Cannon Lake processors, for those who don't remember, were scheduled to originally launch 2017, about half-ish through the year. And then uh, we're seeing them, of course, push back to mid-2018, with the latest news being end of 2018, which quite honestly kind of makes you think well is it actually really worth it i mean think of it from a vendor's point of view an oem's point of view the advertising time that you need the time to actually put the products out there create them and then piss off customers when inevitably a couple of weeks later oh look we're launching this it's 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 probably not worth it does that mean you shouldn't buy um coffee lake no if you you know, need a processor now, then by all means, go ahead and buy one. Well, when they eventually go on sale, of course, 8700Ks and their brethren. But it's just to say that at least right now, it looks like Coffee Lake may be almost dead on in the water. And I wouldn't be surprised if it's kind of just almost glazed over or just really pushed for a couple of usage scenarios. Anyway, we're going to be finishing the video with kind of a darker note, actually. Um, and I don't know the full story because obviously it's their word versus uh, Craig's, who once again is the manager of MT Mods, and he is a British modder. And essentially, he created a rig by the name of Gold Rush, and this was for Computex um, 2017. It was basically for the F Cooler Master modding contest. Now it looks rather nice. It uses an ASUS ROG Alpha Cool. Uh, team group and cable mod, all of these different components, very high end. Now, Gold Rush uh, obviously had an awful lot of work put into it. It even uses 24 karat uh, gold plated fittings, for the love of Jesus. But there's a slight snag, and that is that the system, when it was being returned back, well, uh, the hardline custom water loop was just destroyed. So essentially, all of the coolant had just spilled out. It all inside the case and basically every electronic component inside the uh, case itself is just done it's you know it's damaged and it's not even like the case itself is so salvageable because there's scratches and physical damage all along the custom painting there is a post on social media um, his once again his name is Craig Ferry and I'd like to thank Eddie over at Alpha Cool for nearly killing my career Gold Rush was completely destroyed due to Eddie's incompetence once again these are allegations I'm not saying Eddie was responsible we only have you know Craig's side of the story we'll have to wait for Alpha Cool to release a public statement if they decide to do that 
Um, I have to cover my back here because I don't want anyone to kind of say, no, he's not responsible. I'm just reading what's said. This image is how they returned my work after Computex Eddie himself admitted it was his fault, which doesn't look very good for Eddie. Uh, he placed it in the box after Computex and forgot to package it. Not only that, Alpha Cool is a water cooling company and they forgot to drain a hardline loop. Gold Rush was returned in a puddle of coolant. Um, custom paint work scratched, case was damaged, components all dead. I asked Eddie about it, who said at the time we'll get this covered with insurance. He claimed to, he tried to claim insurance on the courier, which of course was not the courier at fault. Well, pretty obviously they're only going to be able to do their best. I mean, even if you put delicate on it, it's a full water loop. Anyway, Alpha Call slowly but surely stopped responding. The last time we spoke was about eight weeks ago. Eddie emailing them, emailing me, excuse me, telling me to ship this to back to Germany for them to inspect it. I said, sure. Can you organise the shipping? As it's over four hundred pounds, even if I had the cash to spare, I shouldn't be paying more than for the damages that he admitted to causing. Well, I can kind of see about that. That was inked weeks ago. Since then, I've heard multiple e since multiple emails. I even tried to get through to them with friends. Nothing. What Eddie doesn't know is I took my own personal rig to pay for Gold Rush, as it was an insane amount of custom work and pricey. Worst of all, I even said to Eddie, we can forget this ever happened to just focus on the next rig for Gamescom, but nope. Eddie didn't even bother to reply to that either. So thanks to Alpha Cool International for your help. Appreciated bunch of uh, unfavorable comment. Going public with this was the last resort to gain their attention I, to let them know that I wasn't going away. They could ignore my multiple emails, but they cannot ignore a PR nightmare. Now, from what I'm hearing online, their Facebook is being absolutely hammered with, uh, well, comments. Now, from my perspective, please don't, you know, leave them really nasty messages on Facebook, especially for the social media managers to deal with. It's not their fault. Uh, most likely, you know, it's not the person responsible. With that said, do leave a comment and say, if you want to, I'm not telling you to do this, but if you are going to leave a comment, just say, hey, are you aware of this situation? We are. Could you please issue a statement on this? If you do want to respond, I'm not telling you to respond. I'm just saying, please don't leave nasty messages because, you know, it's not the person running the social media's fault for doing this. And it's it's kind of uncool just to kind of blast everything on them. But as you can expect, you know, all of the various modding communities are very unhappy with this. And Alpha Call have a pretty good reputation. You know, they're a pretty big provider of this. So obviously this is causing them some uh, pretty big damage. Um, as you can imagine, it's like, yeah, okay, they're a pretty big fish. But the, fo the pond's pretty small. So what I'm saying is that, yeah, okay, this stuff it definitely has a lot of fans, people buying water loops and stuff, but let's be honest, and this is one of the reasons that, I'm slightly off topic, when I say how overclockable is something. Like, okay, I'm sure that there's a lot of individuals who are watching this who have like a high-end custom water cooling loop and probably they've got like two GTX 1080s and or maybe even higher maybe they've got the, the TIs, ties, whatever you want to call them and they've maybe got like a Fred Ripper 1950X on that which is overclocked absolutely to the stratosphere the problem is most people don't do that like most people if they're going to overclock they're going to buy like a Corsair IAO or something along those lines you know just slap that in they've spent 60 to let's say 120-ish on their cooler and that's about as much effort as they want to go to be honest even me i just can't be bothered with a water cooling hoop i could do it i could build it but i'm moving my computer all the time i'm you know obviously taking components out putting new components in. i just i just don't have the time i don't have the the you know what i don't even have the willpower to deal with it to be honest with you so for a lot of people these type of components even if they have the technical know-how it's a pricey to buy them and b it's a lot of effort to maintain them if you are doing regular work to your rig. Now, obviously, some people love doing that, which is absolutely fantastic. If that's your thing, more power to you, and I'm not criticizing you at all. I, I actually envy people who put the work into that. But my point being that even though PC gaming is very popular at the moment, as is high-end you know, computer uh, technology as a whole, even if you are into that, it doesn't necessarily mean that you've got the cash to plonk down onto like high-end water loops and that type of thing. And don't forget, Alpha Cool themselves have a wide range of products, but they also have competitors. So this isn't particularly a good look for them. 
I'm curious to see what the public response is. Hopefully they do issue one. We'll have to just wait and see. With all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.